Welcome everybody back at Veil of Sound. It's our usual su Sunday interview and we're very, very lucky to have the second half of Sun here on our show. It's, it's a pleasure. Um, Greg, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. I will start with the same question that I also asked Stephen first, and it's very simple. What came first for you, the guitar or the amp? Uh, the guitar, for sure. For sure? Okay. So your love for sound and everything developed later on, right? I, I think I saw that somewhere in your biography, also when looking at the bands. Yeah, the first thing I ever got um, uh, electric guitar was, I, I got I got electric guitar when I was, was quite young, probably, um, oh man, I must have been 12, 12 years old or... Um, uh, maybe maybe 11 11 12 years old and um i got a um a uh a electric guitar and a and a small um amplifier that, w that went with it but um but then i also really sort of learned guitar uh initially on an acoustic guitar so okay. um yeah it's always it was a guitar first and i i didn't really you know i was i grew up uh you know really sort of playing guitar and learning guitar in in an underground uh punk and hardcore scene and it was more about um it wasn't necessarily about the focus wasn't on the gear that you had it was really mm -hmm. whatever you could get your hands on so whatever or whatever you could afford and uh yeah. it was quite 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 uh you know quite poor growing up too so um whatever i could get my hands on or whatever i could borrow is what i used as far as a um uh, amplifier so i didn't my my love and um knowledge of amplification um really didn't come until later um uh in, in around the around the 90s uh, so yeah when i first started off i whatever i could get my hands on to was what i plugged into okay so you just released a new record not under your own name, not with Sun, but under the moniker The Lord. And I think the name is very interesting. Um, why did you choose that one? Um, that's always sort of been sort of a, uh, you know, a kind of happenstance nickname um, based on the, the fact that I'm the founder, owner, and operator of uh, Southern Lord Records. Ah, so, okay. Um, and and uh, somehow, like uh, through my email program, my emails always come up as the Lord, and I don't know if that's something that I ended up, if I did when I was programming it my mail in or what it was, but it, it always comes up like that. So it's always you know it's always sort of been in a also a um, uh, you know a, an ongoing nickname or uh, you know funny funny uh, thing about my name or the name of the label. So uh yeah just it's kind of a it stuck and it made sense so that's what the uh that's what i decided to release this music under okay because i thought like the name itself is very ambiguous you know with the religious connotation or the aristocratic um notation so that clues it up nicely um that also plays very well with um with what I asked Stephen, that's something that a lot of people don't recognize in a lot of your works and projects, that there is always also a certain sense of humor in it, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I, I feel like that's a reflection of who we are as people. I mean, we're not completely serious 100% of the time. I mean, we're very serious about the music that we make and, um, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time there's also you know it's it's it, we we i also feel like we don't take ourselves a hundred percent serious all the time you know um there's a time for there's definitely a time for laughter laughter is important in life i believe definitely um so you know um i i don't consider what the music that i make or the the groups that i play in to be um a joke or to be like uh satirical but mm -hmm. um but there is there is definitely part i mean that's just part of who we are as people so it, it yeah. it's that comes through in the in some at some points here and there as well you mm -hmm. know 
And I think really like kind of the, ex- the extremity of, of what we do, it, it can be somewhat absurd and, and, mm-hmm. and humorous at times. And, and we, 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 we recognize that and yeah. uh, a- acknowledge it. So it's not something that we're like, you know, ashamed of or anything like that. I, what we, we realize that the, you know, the sort of the, the mammoth, ness of what we do can sometimes be or the sometimes the performance um and the theater of it could be sometimes humorous and and um that's you know that's where we we definitely acknowledge that how do you then react to people like me over intellectualizing your music um i think it's interesting um i i like different hearing different um uh people's perception people's perception of what we do you know Uh, i think it's really interesting um i i i I, i'm i'm grateful that somebody is taking the time to um to think about what we're doing Mm -hmm. and um i appreciate that when I listened to the new record, Forest Nocturne, when I listened to it, I was uh, really amazed by how musically diverse it is. We have like organ arrangements, we have full out drones. Is that also a depiction of, you know, like how vast and variable your own musical interests are? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm a huge fan. I'm just obsessed with music of all different kinds. Um, it's always been like that for me. And especially as, as I discovered and like probably around the mid nineties, um, be well, really the beginning of the nineties too. And I kind of started listening to other stuff outside of underground music, outside of metal and punk and hardcore mm-hmm. and discovering things like jazz and um and different different styles and different um artists and it's always it's 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 always about the 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 discovery for me i love Mm -hmm. discovering new music um and new artists that are or that are new to me at least and uh, and i i I think that's what i think is one of the greatest things about music for me is that it just it's it's endless I'm always um, continually finding new stuff um, mm-hmm. that is interesting or um, uh, is fascinating, you know? So, um, and I, I think, <clears throat> I hope that some of that comes through in the music that I create. You know? It definitely does on this very last album, because I think there are a lot of influences on the record. Um Apart from some obvious music score influences, which I would like to talk about later, um, which other influences are there? Anna von Hauswolf, I could imagine. Um, <clears throat> I love her music, and it's really um, grateful and proud to be involved in releasing some of her recordings. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know... I don't know if necessarily I would say that's a direct influence on this record. I, mm-hmm. I was listening to, uh, <laughs> I was listening to a lot of um, uh, early Swedish death metal, Entombed okay. and Dismember and, and things mm-hmm. like that, and also really, you know, I, always been a massive fan of Celtic Frost, and and so there's a that sort of there's some there's definitely some metallic influence on this mm-hmm. record. <laughs> Um, and there always has been in, in for most of most of what I've done in my life. So that mm-hmm. that's you know that's in there. And and but in particular, I was I was really focused on specific tones and atmosphere of early Swedish death metal records. And then, um, but my idea was kind of like to take that tone and and um, and vibe and fuse it with um, in a cin- in, in a cinematic way. And and was I was listening to a lot of Bernard Herrmann um, scores, um, especially the Vertigo um, mm-hmm. 
score and also Cape Fear score. And, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to create something that kind of maybe was a fusion of these, of these different things, you know, had, had elements of, of um, metal, but was presented in a more like atmospheric and cinematic frame. Which you definitely achieved because um, when listening to the record, I had a lot of stills or images in my, my head, you know, from empty rooms or self-turning children's mobiles above over empty cradles or big derelict churches, vast forests without any human intervention. So that definitely works very well on the record. It always has a little bit of a, I would say, horror appeal, horror movie appeal. Is that just my imagination or is that also something that you looked for? No, that's, 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 uh, you nailed it. And <clears throat> uh, that the music that I created on that record was actually originally music that was, um, I was commissioned to do uh, a score for a horror film. And uh, some of some of the music made it onto that um, into the into the film, and mm -hmm. some of it some of it did not. But um, mm -hmm. I decided I really enjoyed the whole process of making that record, and really was focused on originally focused on creating m music for the film, um, and that was it. So <clears throat> I was make creating all these pieces, and. Um, uh, they didn't, like I said, they didn't use all of it. And I really liked how everything sat together. And I, I'd, I'd mm -hmm. kind of written it in a way that it, it was, you know, the sequence of how the record is, is how I really, how I wrote it and how I, the flow of how I wanted it in, in, uh, in the overall uh, entirety of the album. So I, I decided to release it as, as I had conceived it really. Um, mm -hmm. And um so yeah, that, that you know, I was, I was, I was, um, <clears throat> I was definitely influenced and trying to channel um, the atmosphere and vibe of uh, horror film mm -hmm. so scores and soundtracks that I that I grew up with and loved. Like um, The Shining was another another one that I really liked, and Wendy Carlos's work on that. Um, yeah. So you know that's what I was trying to, but you know, do it do it in my own my own way, you know, with um, with heavy heavy saturated guitars. Something that I have to ask then is, you just mentioned that not everything was used for the movie score or the movie soundtrack. Just a question: the last three tracks on the record, Deciduous, Old Grove, and Triumph of the Oak. Did they make the cut? Because there is like, how should I say? There is like a little divide between the first five tracks and those last three tracks in my imagination or in my perception. Yeah, I think the only, <clears> out <throat> of those three, I think Triumph of the Oak is the only one that was actually used in the film. Of those three, mm -hmm. um, Deciduous and Old Growth uh, were not used. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, yeah, I really like the way those two tracks actually, they, they're, they're meant to be together. Um, yeah, one like is couple, one, right? yeah, they're, they're one is, you know, deciduous is a really basically an, an, an intro for, yeah. um, old growth, but, um, but triumph of the Oak is, is kind of, a, it's kind of the, <clears throat> it was the only track on the record that has vocals on it. Attila, yeah. Attila Chihar, uh, did vocals on it. So it, it, it it's sort of um it's sort of maybe sticks out a little bit uh more than the other tracks or just it's it's different um but i really like the way it, you know i originally was you know written of course as an instrumental track like all the others but then i really um i wanted to do something with attila it had been in it had been a while and i thought it'd be cool to have him involved and have mm -hmm. his voice on it he mm -hmm. really what he contributed to was amazing so question um when i listen to the track on repeat or not to the track to the record on repeat 
I had somewhat of a feeling that the same, how should I say, when, when I listened to Theme, to the first tra track on the record, I had a feeling of like, it sounded to me as if there was like a saw blade running through the track. <laughs> and I also had the same image in my head when I listened to Triumph of the Oak. Is there um, an ad a picking up the things again that you did in the first track? So that it like works like, it f even when you listen to it on repeat, it flows into each other. Well, that's good to hear. I mean, <clears throat> it wasn't anything necessarily uh, conscious, but the whole re record was written in a in probably a, a, a space of time around around two to three months, and it was you know mm -hmm. I was I felt um, I was really inspired, and I felt I was in a in a in a in a um, in a consistent thematic mode, you know, with everything. And that's, that's why I was, it was important for me to release the record as I, with, with everything that I had written for it, you know, instead of, um, you know, as I was, I was, um, I didn't want to be at the mercy of the, of the film and, you know, release only what they used or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought mm -hmm. the whole thing mm -hmm. to me was, uh, important to be, um, released as I, um, wrote it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm glad to hear that. It, I, I think that, um, you know, uh, to me, everything makes sense and works together. And, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that, you know, it's, it's better to hear that than, oh yeah, it sounds just jointed and nothing, it doesn't fit. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> no, no. It, it really flows together. Yeah, it's. It, it, I don't know if I'd necessarily say it was, was you know, in the, it was a conscious decision, but it makes sense because, mm -hmm. like I said, I wrote it all in the space of about two to three months, and it was. Um, I had really. I was just. I was really focused on, on, um, on the music that I was making for the film, and mm -hmm. and it was. It was a. You know, I I I I wasn't doing anything else at the time as far as musically. I was just okay. I'm just mm -hmm. focusing on this, so I'm glad to hear that it sounds um, concise and and maybe consistent. Definitely. I would like to talk about a few tracks on the record in particular, and one of them must be Church of Hermann. As a German, I have to pronounce it correctly. Uh, Church of Hermann. Um, are you aware that the spelling of the name is wrong? Uh, it should be correct on the record. Because, at least on the digital track listing that I saw, it was written with H-E-R-R-M-A-N, uh, which I thought, like, okay, that might be either coincidental, or it could just be the, dif the, the digital naming, because in German, Hermann, like Hermann, is written with one R. And I thought, like, hmm, are they are they trying to play could play a joke, or is he trying to play play a joke on us again? Because you know, you could if if we stuck stick to the spelling that I saw, then it would be very interesting because it could again be like an ambiguous thing, you know, Herr and Mann, two words for the same thing, uh, like a man and something. That was something where I said, like, okay, that is that is interesting. Well, um, as far as far as I as far as I know, his his name is spelled with two R's and two M's. Two oh, M's. then it's from the movie, probably, right? Well, that's the name. How you spell the, the his name? It's two R's okay. and two M's. Okay. Um, yeah. And I like the 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 organ underneath it. Did mm -hmm. what was what was there first? The organ or the guitar parts? Um. The organ and the the organ was used, you know, really sort of as uh, as inspiration for the guitar. I mean, there was some of the way that I was composing the the material on this album was to um, take um, different instrumentation um, and or listen to even even really just sort of listening to uh, Bernard Herrmann uh, his his scores and then. Mm -hmm coming up with, you know, and, and putting them on repeat and then coming up with my own riffs that were inspired mm -hmm. by, by that. Um, and, um, and kind of immerse myself in that sort of, uh, 
way of working for a while. And, and that was one of the tracks. There's a, there's a piece on, um, on vertigo that is, um, inspired by that, uh, um, there's an organ part on there that um, that, mm. that was really inspiring. So that was what I, I sort of used as a as a um, foundation for that track. And then you probably added layer upon layer of sound and techniques, right? Yeah, guitar and different um, different uh, textures of of mm. sound on that. Yeah, which is very interesting because. Although the whole thing sounds very organic, and it really does, it's a perfect track. Again, one of those things that give give away images after a few seconds already. But I caught myself listening to it after four or five times, and I thought, like, it sounds very simple. But at the same time, I'm very sure that he invested a lot of time on the layering of it all. That comes through really nicely. Um, so how long does it take you to write such a track? I don't know. I didn't time it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't, you know, to me, uh, it's, 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 uh, when, when it feels like, when it feels right, then it feels like I've, I've, when I've, when I've possibly been able to capture what I have in my head, then it's, then it's done. You know, um, a lot of the, the layering was done uh, in um, in the studio with um, the producer Brad Wood, and he had a lot mm -hmm. of great suggestions and a lot of sounds that he introduced into all of this. So he's really um, he's really uh, important in the um, in the creation and the execution of this of the tracks on the album, um, and and it was a really it was a great you know that this is something that sun has done a lot of with a lot of different layering of uh and mm -hmm. textures of things and yeah. so it's it's similar to that but um we were trying to or at least i was trying to my idea was to maybe do some a few unorthodox and things things and things that i hadn't done in the past so mm -hmm. um and 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 also working with someone uh that I hadn't worked with before, which was Brad Wood. Um, and, and he definitely brought a different perspective to, um, to the uh, recordings. Cool. Another thing that I would like to talk about are the two left-hand lullabies. Again, I have a feeling as if the first one is like an intro to the second, right? Yeah, the, the first one, uh, the, sorry, the second one was the was the um, original uh, that was first that came first mm -hmm. and and then we we had this idea of really sort of making an atmospheric version um, of that track and, and then turning that into um, somewhat of an intro but sort of like kind of kind of boiling down the essence of that track and just mm -hmm. having certain elements um, and to create some atmosphere as a setup for for the um, for the 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 heavy guitars version of that song, you know. Yeah, that really turned out very nicely. And again, it's one of those tracks that that creates images in your head instantly. You know, with the first oh, one, I, I connect both of them to a children's room. Interestingly, mm -hmm. in the intro and in the condensed version of it. That room is empty. And in the second one, it's as if something very dangerous is slowly creeping into the room. How do you, cre how, I, I, how do you feel about this understanding of, of the track? You know, also because of the name, it's, left it's, it's, Is that something yeah. that fits? Yeah, the, the originally that was um, written for a moment in the film where it's a um, it's a daycare where there's lots of toys that are littered around, mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> and so we had this idea of having this sort of broken um, uh, sort of um, music box sound 
Mm -hmm. um, like a children's music box. We wanted like a broken sort of warped sound. Mm -hmm. And, and so the, <clears throat> the melody that I had written on guitar or the main guitar riff, we just transposed that into this um, sort of broken music box uh, uh, sound, <laughs> but it's the same, it's the same um, melody that was originally written on guitar. So things like that were, 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 were some of the different ideas that we tried, like taking, taking the melody or the riff that I had written originally and then using different instrumentation um, uh, for it, either like a synth or a piano or in this case, a, um, like a, chill, a child's toy or music box. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and then, um, you know, then warping it, you know, and <laughs> making it um, sound twisted and demented in some way was, was the, uh, the idea. And what I would like to talk about is the three songs at the end again, you know, Deciduous, Old Grove and Triumph of Fio. What I really like about those three is they also work like in, in an ascending way. You know, it has a feeling as if it becomes, I don't want to say the image becomes more horrible and horrible, but you know what I mean. It's getting darker and darker and more dangerous. How important is the track listing of a record to you? I think it's really important. I mean, I, I, I'm glad that you, um, I like hearing your, um, your perception of it. And, and, and I mean, cause it, it, to me, it's, it, it's, it flows as, as an album. It's like a, it's like a journey, you know, you're taking with this record. Um, and I think everything fits, fits nicely together. I spent a lot of time on, on figuring out the core, you know, where I wanted these songs to, um, where I wanted them to be in the sequence and yeah. how they, how they, how they worked or didn't work with each other. That was really something that I was really important to me. So, and, and that's something that, you know, with Sun as well and other groups that I've been in, it's always been a, uh, an important part of the album is deciding what, what songs go where. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of thought uh, put into that because I think it's important because we, you know, we're hopefully setting up a, you know, a journey for somebody to go on and, and I'd like it to match or flow the way that it, 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 it is in, in, in our heads, in my head, you know? Um, so how, we, how I, how I uh, conceived the record, you know? Don't get me wrong, the whole record flows into each other. Just like I said, I just feel like the f last three form like a very tight-knit unit ascending and flowing into each other. Um, and also, again, it works very well because, as I said, Triumph of the Oak picks up a few things that Theme has done at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, what also struck me about the record is the lengths, length of the songs. Um, it feels as if it's a little bit more condensed and if it's as if it's a little bit more concrete than some um is that correct or is it just the necessity of writing a score i think i think a little bit of both i mean <clears throat> a lot of the the stuff that i've written lately um and the stuff that i've written outside of this um uh forest nocturne record is is also uh the songs uh, are shorter in length and um, I think that's just sort of uh, you know I, part of it is wanting to do something different than than Sun and mm -hmm. and present but present these ideas and these songs uh, or these the these compositions that I have in my head are are the way I the way I think about it and the way I've written it is in a is a, is in a shorter amount of time. Um, I think Sun, uh, it's, it's about the two of us, me and Steven, and what we create um, takes a, a longer time to develop. <laughs> um, I think, that, you know, it, but for me, the songs that I create, I'm developing them at least the way that I think that they sound, uh, the way that it sounds to, to me uh, is, is a shorter period of time. And 
And I also thought, you know, you were right about so creating stuff for a score. Um, you're creating things, at least I was in this particular instance, creating um, pieces of music for very specific moments in the film. Yeah. And it's not about, you know, the entire, it's the, they're, they're, these can be short, like two, three minutes or even less um, uses of the music. So actually a lot of this stuff, uh, the, 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 you know, the pieces of music on Forest Nocturne are, are like the longer versions of what was used in the film um, because they're, you know, they're not using the entire track um, yeah, they're yeah. using just pieces of it. So it's actually <laughs> the, 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 it's the, the, the pieces are actually longer than what was used. Um, uh, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I, I don't know. I think that, um, sun is a different beast, you know, it's it. And like I said, I think it, the ideas that Steven and I have and the way that we, um, what the, what we're writing oftentimes takes much longer to develop or it just goes down a different path that ends up being more time you know more t more time uh uh involved more invo you know it's more time consuming probably to time work consuming on yeah uh, yeah time con time consuming is a good way to put it yeah, and it's all, of course, you know, you are writing this record alone, you know. I mean, of course, you have influences and you have other musicians helping you, but this is your own. You don't have to compromise as much as with even just one more partner, of course. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And that was what was really interesting to um, mm -hmm. to discover and to... Um, to uh, um, learn uh was that because i've spent you know my really my entire life is uh, music has always been about playing in a group i've never um i've never done stuff solo before i've written stuff of course at home but i've always brought it into a group setting and worked with other people and it was really the chemistry of the other people i'm involved with that um that that's you know that's what the outcome of the of the music we made is is us we're us making stuff together and that chemistry so doing it by myself was a completely new process for me and i really um i really enjoyed it um and i learned a lot and there's new things that came out um because of that and as you mentioned um that not having to compromise was also really um created some uh, interesting developments. Hmm. Nevertheless, there are a few people involved outside of you in Forest Nocturne, and I, I really liked it, or I like the list of people that you've been working with. Um, you, it, it sounds a little bit like it, it is a culmination of a lot of your former projects. You know, you already mentioned Akila, who's back, and um, some other people as well that are influencing the lord and the first two things that you put out were two singles both amazing stuff one with robin from big brave and one with william duval living legend himself just like you uh <laughs> but none of them have made it on on the record um how come did you not think those two would be appropriate for the mu for the movie or did you want to leave those two singles alone in a way? Well, the last two years I've done a, a lot of recording. I've, been, I've actually recorded um, about 18 different pieces of music. And mm -hmm. um, I have different ideas and different ways that I'd like to present some of that stuff. Um, the, the tracks with um, Robin and with William were really... Um, you know, I'd recorded these tracks and uh, that I really liked. Um, they weren't written um, during the writing of Forest Nocturne and they weren't recorded during that recording session. They were a completely different session. But um, I just w really, I enjoy collaborating with other people too. And, you know, making music on my own is 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 amazing. But um, I really enjoy that collaboration. There's a couple people that 
um, I've wanted to do something with or collaborate with, or I thought that would be really um, uh, interesting and, and, and fun to do, uh, to, to, to work with. And Robin and, and William were um, two of those people. I've got other tracks uh, that I've recorded and other people uh, in mind in the future. And, um, you know, maybe those will all come out uh, compiled uh, uh, at some point. I'm not really too sure. Um, but, you know, Forest Nocturne was just a, was a very focused effort as far as, you know, the, the tracks that were written were, were specifically written, you know, together. And, and so I do have a lot of other stuff that um, I've recorded and it's going to come out in a different way. Um, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I've been really fortunate to be able to m make this music and then work with some really, um, really great uh, musicians and, and, and people. So if I hear it correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I hear it correctly, we can expect more music from the Lord. Absolutely. Yeah, I have, there's a whole, there's an entire album that I made with um, uh, Petra Hayden that I'm really, really excited about. Um, she's an incredible vocalist and um Didn't she violinist. also work with Sun? She's worked with Sun and she's also worked with Goatsnake. Um, back in the early 2000s, actually, um, she's on the Double O Void record by Sun and then she's on... Um, She's on the um, the first Goat Snake album, Goat Snake One, and mm -hmm. and um, just an amazing, an amazing vocalist. And um, we reconnected uh, over the last couple of years, and um, I started writing some music that um, I was was hoping that she would potentially um, uh, put some vocals on. And I played it for her, and she really she she really liked it and so she said oh i'd love to do something and so we immediately started working on some on uh, on this stuff in the studio we did two recording sessions um and um uh there's ended up being six uh pieces total so um, that's going to be something that's coming out uh before the end of the year i'm really really yeah. excited about very very you, it's you very do... it's you do know that a lot of fans of Goat Snake and your early Sun stuff will now be giddy as hell, including <laughs> me. I hope so. It's pretty, you know, it's it's very different from that, but um, but then it has some similarities too, you know. Um, and and it, it's 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 got a different atmosphere uh, and vibe than Forest Nocturne, but it has some of the um, some of the elements of it too, you know, the the guitars, of course, and. Um, but her voice is is just um, otherworldly. She's um, she's in incredible. So uh, I'm really excited about that. Um, that's something that we're hoping to um, release before the end of the year. Awesome. Um, when I interviewed Stephen a few weeks ago, um, and we released it on our very first birthday um, at the end of April, uh, he spoke very highly of you as an entrepreneur as the mastermind behind Sovereign Lord, how much time does the label take up nowadays? Um, that's hard to, it's hard to answer because it, it's, it's, it's kind of like this ongoing thing. It, it's sometimes it's, it's a lot of time that I'm up, all hours of the night working on things. And then sometimes, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, so I, I don't know how to, to calculate the amount of time, but I mean, you know, we've been doing this for, you know, <laughs> uh, like 20, 23 years now. So, um, uh, uh, what, what year are we at? Yeah. Yeah. yeah 20, yeah, 23. We are, we so are in 2022. 2022. And I think you started so. the label before the, before the millennium. So. Yeah, so 98 is when yeah, we started. So 23, yeah, so, 24 years now. Yeah, yeah. So it's, but, you know, we've been, there's been so much work and, and effort that's been put into it over the years that it's, um, it has a, what I would consider an, 
And um, I'm grateful for is we have a, a pretty solid foundation <laughs> to, that we built yeah. up, that, that we that we built upon. So um, we have a we have an amazing um, uh, following, and and I'm really grateful for that. So, but uh, but yeah, I mean, um, I, it's hard for me to uh, it's hard for me to say how much time exactly it is. It's just. It's it's, it's 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 your it's, everyday it's, job, right? It's your it's, it's your, well, it's, your it's, main it's, job. It's my life, <laughs> you know. Really, it's like Which is that's what. It, yeah, it's, it's. I don't even really. I don't consider it a job. I, I consider it my life. It's what I've been doing for so much of my life, and it's just it's a part of my life. And and um, so I, it's. I don't really look at it, you know, in terms of a job. It it, it is a source of income for sure, and I'm really. Um, fortunate uh for that and grateful but there's been a lot of hard work put in over the years and there continues to be um it's just part of it it's just kind of like i said it's that's what it's, it's just part of my life you know so it's interesting that you verse it differently than stephen but he said something very similar about being able to sustain your living by something that is not a job it's very very interesting um, yeah, I just don't consider it to be a job because I mean, I've had jobs, you know, early part of my life and, you know, yeah. when I was a teenager and into my, <clears throat> into my early to mid twenties, uh, I was, I had jobs and this, what I do with Southern Lord, I, I, I just don't consider it to be that because, um, probably because it brings me so much happiness and joy as well, you know, and I just don't associate um work that that work that i did early in my life and those jobs with happiness and joy it was just a means to an end you know yeah, we've all um, been there haven't we yeah you know and that's why i, I feel I, I i i just you know i'm i'm i feel very uh fortunate and i i'm i, I really can't believe that that it turned out like it did you know it's 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 amazing so i don't really uh, yeah, I don't think of it as a as a job, and 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 really, like you know, that's the thing that's the way that Southern Lord has always been is, and and a lot of my playing as a musician too, it's always been a fan first, and and a musician uh, second, or a fan first, a fan first, and a businessman second, you know. So um, it's it, that, you know, it's kind of it's kind of a almost seems to me like a fluke that it ended up working out and being somewhat successful because um that's usually not the way it goes you know what i mean uh, yeah and, but uh, one also has to say that you are being very very humble here i mean um if if one looks at the things that you released there are milestones of heavy music on that roster that you built and on the catalog that you got one thing that strikes me is that you always come up with new, really interesting artists. How do you find those? Well, um, I guess I'm you can't always... listen to every demo that's sent to Southern Lord. No, it's, you know, it's more about, to me, like, you know, it's very rare that a demo is sent that is something that, I've ended up working with. It's very rare because for me, the exciting part about it is actually the discovery, mm -hmm. um, you know, finding it on my own. And I the just hunting. feel like it's you know, the hunting. Yeah. The hunt. Um, it's more, that's more rewarding for me. Um, and um, it's, it's also that a bit of the unexpected, you know, and that sort of, that sort of, um, exhilaration that comes from discovering something on your own um and um the excitement so when i get a demo it's like it's like or somebody there's been oftentimes somebody um suggests something it's not that i don't like that because then it's like it's also like oh cool well, I'm, I'm hearing something potentially hearing something new mm -hmm. um and i love hearing new music so that's also uh uh, you know, I'm not saying that that's, you know, that I don't like that, but for me, the, the, what I like, what I like and enjoy the most is finding something on my own. And I'm constantly, um, searching and hunting for music all the time. 
I love it. That's part of what makes, makes me happy in life. Um, and I've just been really lucky to be able to have a platform for that as well and be able to work with some of these incredible musicians that whose music I like. And, and I feel like it's important to share their music and uh, turn other people onto it. So, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I go through phases. Sometimes I'm not as, as active um, searching out stuff or sometimes I get, I get sort of like, really stuck in one specific style of music um and get you know it's kind of you know uh obsess over it and it sort of uh it, you know it, it takes over everything that i'm i'm listening to or doing at that time period um that happens sometimes but um and you know a lot of times that's you know like like a bernard herman or um john coltrane or something like that i'll get stuck in this type of music that um but uh but I love, you know, I, 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 I'm oftentimes searching stuff out myself as well. So, so how must I imagine you searching? Do you nowadays do it via the internet? Do you go to a lot of concerts? Do you read a lot of magazines, blogs, whatever? How do you do it? Yeah, mostly the internet, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, just just learning about a, a band or a, or a, or maybe a, maybe even like a. Um, uh, a, a regional scene of music uh, mm -hmm. that 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 is developing or developed or is you know in the past even is really interesting and or learning about a new band and um, you know things that they're influenced by doing doing sort of a you know a, going down a rabbit hole with things but I really uh, I really enjoy um, discogs as a source for information and learning about different styles of music and different musicians and their history. Um, but um, you know, I you know, I don't I don't know. I I don't know if there's any specific blog or or online zine that I would I turn to. I just kind of you know, I'm just sort of soaking things up, you know, constantly <laughs> and like oh, if something sounds interesting. Bandcamp has has been great as a way of um, discovering bands because you know, really like bands are able to now just put get stuff up online Definitely. on their own um yeah. and it's very very diy i really enjoy that platform and that has been a place where i have gone to many many times to like oh i heard about this something this, this sounds interesting so i'll go to Bandcamp and 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 listen to the music there yeah although we still have to wait and see how it turns out now that epic games took over but we'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Steve, um, Greg, we always end our interviews with quickfire questions. Questions oh where I give you okay. two alternatives, and you have to decide on have to decide on one of them, and maybe give a short explanation. Well, let's you're, you're, start you're, with something wait, simple. Wait, wait, you're, you're quick fire. I'll give you two alternatives. But and hold, you on, hold on, on one of them. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold mm -hmm. on. Quick fire. You're asking a musician who creates slow compositions to do something quickly. Yeah, so I so know, I, I, want, I, I, want pref, I want to preface it with that. <laughs> <laughs> so we start slowly. Seattle or San Francisco? Uh, I have to go Seattle, but I do love San Francisco. Mm -hmm. When going on vacation, preferably to the mountains or preferably to the seaside? seaside mm -hmm. now um, be, being a fanboy i have to ask goat snake or teeth of lions rule which band is more likely to do a comeback neither <laughs> a, i can understand um californian red wine or french white wine californian red wine mm-hmm Writing or performing? Right now, writing. Yes. Yeah. Writing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the last <laughs> for the last couple of years, writing for sure. Um <laughs> yeah. getting excited to do some performing, you know. Okay. Um I don't know, you know. Um I really like writing and I like the whole I love recording, especially with Sun. Sun is one of my favorite you know, some of my favorite experiences recording and creating music has been with Sun. 
And uh, so I really enjoy that. Um, but we've also had some incredible opportunities and, and um, uh, concerts that we've in amazing places that we've been able to play. So I really enjoy that. I enjoy both, but right now I'm sort of been really into writing and, you know, obviously these, you know, the forest nocturne record and other things that I've done. Um, that's, that's the result of that. Um, but I'm excited to also eventually do some performances with sun as well. So, so I know that you like both bands, I'm very sure, but, uh, which one ends up more often on your ear channels, Canate or Burning Witch? Burning Witch. Okay. Um, preferred genre, 90s grunge or 80s hardcore? 80s hardcore. For the entrepreneur, what is more thrilling to the owner of Sov or to the to the guy who's running sovereign lord discovering new artists or repressing old favorites like neon christ oh example. wow that's a tough question I, so I love i love both and i definitely wouldn't want to choose one or the other i like to have i like to have both but um i you know really it's about i, I love discovering new artists You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that's if I had to choose one or the other, they're, they're pretty equal, but there's nothing like the thrill of um, discovering something new that that just blows you away. So I, I'm, I'll, I'll go with that. And as we mentioned, William Duval already, Neon Christ or Alice in Chains? Oh, Neon Christ for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, Alice in Chains, it's a whole different beast. I mean, you know, I because there's a whole <laughs> there's a whole era of that band yeah. that existed yeah. and and I have some you know some connection to that growing up in Seattle and um That's those guys I... those guys went to a high school in my our rival high school Stephen and I's rival high school those guys two of those guys went to that school and so it's a very sort of local regional thing and then having William joined the band after Lane passed. So bizarre. It's so, but great. You know, he's, I've always, I was a fan of his from Neon Christ. And he was also in a band called Blast that we worked with, um, you know, so, and I was always a fan of him, you know, his guitar playing. I had no idea that he was a vocalist and an incredible vocalist. So I thought it was one of the possibly one of the most bizarre choices ever for them to come back with with him, but I it works. But I but I thought it was incredible because I think yeah. he's an incredible musician. So um, and I love everything about him, and I love those those records that they have made. They've made it with this producer Nick Raskolinics, who um, worked on uh, Goat Snake Records. He worked on Flower of Disease, and then um, the kind of the comeback return record um black age blues so and i love working with him and i love his production so um so i'm a huge fan of that band but you know, neon christ is a group that i grew up with and um when i was a kid and and just loved it so and, um so if i had to make a choice i'd have to say neon christ would the question have been more difficult if i had asked neon christ or blast I would definitely choose Blast. Blast is probably my, probably my favorite hardcore band of all time. Mm -hmm. I, That's saying something yeah. from somebody who was an engine kid. Yes. Cool. And that was also crazy because, you know, for William, you know, a punk from Atlanta, Georgia, to join this, yeah. these surfers from Santa Cruz. <laughs> so when he joined that band, I, was, I was, couldn't believe it. When I was a kid, I saw yeah. them play. And I, you know, it was before the internet or anything, so I had no idea. He was imagine. in the band and I, I just, they were on stage in San Francisco uh, mm -hmm. at this place called the farm. And uh, yeah. I was like, I'm like, how oh, they got a new guitar player. What? It's the <laughs> guy beyond Christ. What's he doing out here? You know, like yeah. didn't, didn't really fit in with those guys at all because they were these nah. surfers, also, you know, also from the appearance. Right. So, nah. Yeah, of course. I mean, he had a huge Afro and is like, this is, but he, he did have the Dan Armstrong guitar. So it, it, it okay. you know, 
it worked. But I mean, it worked anyways. It was amazing, but it was just like, it was one of those moments and my mind was just completely blown because I was a, already a fan of Neon Christ and mm. Blast was my favorite band. So yeah, really cool. One last question. Uh, also because of something that you said before. Iceburn or Eagle Twin? Wow. Uh, Iceburn. I mean, Iceburn is... Man, I've, I've spent so much time with those guys um, in the 90s and their music was so influential and um, really um, it was like kind of eye-opening for me in, in a lot of ways. And, and those guys personally turned me on to a lot of in, incredible yeah. jazz music and, and turned me on to the Mahavishnu Orchestra and John McLaughlin. Um, so definitely them, but it was also really to me like, an honor to continue to to work with Gentry uh, in Eagle Twin. Who I also think are a, a, a phenomenal uh, group. So, um, but kind of you know, Iceburn was first, and it's kind of a very it's a, like a sentimental thing as well um, for me. So um, I totally but, get you. I was one of yeah. a few Europeans to to champion Iceburn early on because mm. nobody over here listened to them. Yeah, completely unimaginable. Um, Greg, thanks for taking your time. Thanks for mm -hmm. doing this. And I hope to hear more of the Lord very soon. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for your time, man. Take care. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.